Hey, Pastor Brett here, and I want to turn your attention to Exodus chapters 11 and 12. Our reading assignment was Exodus 11 through 20, but I just want to look at chapters 11 and 12 where we uh, have the conclusion of the 10 plagues with the 10th and final plague, which is the passing over the land of Egypt of the death angel that God sends to take the firstborn from every household. Now, when you think about the 10 plagues that it took to convince Pharaoh to obey the word of the Lord, which was, let my people go, the Hebrew people in bondage in Egypt, Moses, the spokesperson for God, the deliverer, coming before Pharaoh and demanding, let my people go. The word of the Lord. Pharaoh, who thought himself to be a god, but not the only god, one of many gods. The Egyptians worshipped many gods. Ten of the most prominent gods they worshipped, God showed his superiority over those false gods through these ten plagues. Let me give you an example. Think about the first plague, which was the water of the Nile River being turned into blood. That was actually God showing his superiority over the false god of the Nile River. They worshiped the Nile River as a god. In fact, I'll uh, share with you the name of that false god. The false god was uh, named Hapi. H-A-P-I is how we have uh, translated that word. Another example of this would be the ninth plague the plague um, of darkness and the when when God brought complete darkness over the land that was a direct if you want to say assault on the false god of the sun god Re. the Egyptians worshiped the sun god Re. they worshiped the sun and so God sent darkness over the land to prove that he was superior to the false god of Re, the sun god. Then you have the tenth and final plague, the, the, the plague that finally convinced Pharaoh to release God's people. And that, of course, is the death angel, as I've already mentioned. And it's mentioned in chapter 11, the plague on the firstborn. Chapter 11 is a short chapter. The Lord said to Moses, I will bring out one more plague. I will bring on one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will let you go from here. And when he does, he will drive you out completely. Tell the people that men and women alike are to ask their neighbors for articles of silver and gold. The Lord made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and Moses himself was highly regarded in Egypt by Pharaoh's officials and by the people. So Moses said, This is what the Lord says. About midnight I will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die from the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the firstborn son of the female slave who is at her hand mill and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt, worse than there has ever been or will ever be again. But among the Israelites, not a dog will bark at any person or animal. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. All these officials of yours will come to me bowing down before me and saying, Go you and all the people who follow you. After that, I will leave. Then Moses, hot with anger, left Pharaoh. The Lord had said to Moses, Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you so that my wonders may be multiplied in Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh. That's all the ten plagues. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let the Israelites go out of his country. Then you have chapter 12, where God then gives instructions to Moses and Aaron as to how to avoid their firstborn dying. And that is, they are to celebrate this Passover, that the death angel would pass over the Hebrew people, God's people, and would not strike the firstborn from their households. And so they were to have this Passover meal. And then that was to be the first among many in the future to remember what God did through this miracle, this, this tenth plague, 
and preserving the Hebrew people from its effects. And so they had this Passover meal where they then offered this sacrifice to God. They took the blood from the Passover lamb and they placed it over the doorpost of the household. And when the death angel saw the blood over the house, uh, doorpost of the household, he passed over that house and did not strike the firstborn from that household. This, of course, is great symbolism for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice. The Bible says in Leviticus 17:11, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Adam and Eve, after they committed that first sin that plunged all of humanity and all of us into this world of sin and strife and sorrow and brokenness, God killed a couple of animals to make coverings for Adam and Eve to cover their nakedness, to cover their shame, to cover their, if you want to put it in a metaphor, to cover their sin. There had to be bloodshed. Adam and Eve sins were forgiven because blood was shed. Of course, it was just a picture of what was to occur. The true forgiveness of sins was to occur much later in history after Adam and Eve with Jesus Christ coming to this earth and dying on the cross and shedding his blood for forgiveness of sins. And we look back now 2,000 years to that sacrifice of Jesus for our forgiveness of sins. So all this is tied together. The scripture is beautiful in how it weaves this wonderful story of God's grace and mercy to us. And of course, finds its apex, its climax, uh, the reality of all his grace and mercy, mercy comes through the cross of Jesus Christ. Beautiful, beautiful thing to think about as we read this Exodus story. Tragic day that day for the Egyptians, but their hope was in false gods. Now, it's easy for us today, today to, in a country such as North America, where it was uh, where our nation, the United States, was founded largely on Judeo-Christian principles and for us to think monotheistically there's just one true God. We've been taught that. We know that. Our God is the one true God. The other gods are false gods. It's easy for us to kind of look at the Egyptians and say, oh, look at them, all those false gods. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. Why would they believe in false gods? And here's the thing. Are we truly blameless when it comes to worshiping false gods and multiple gods? May I suggest to you that in America, false gods, though they aren't real, I'm speaking here in terms for us to understand, they're alive and well. The gods of materialism, the gods of success, the gods of pleasure, of entertainment, the gods of sensuality. These are false gods in our culture. The god of convenience. We can identify all kinds of false gods that we value so much. And we look at them and say, well, they worship the sun. Well, do people here today worship the sun? But what are the gods we worship? We're in a country now since 1973. We have slaughtered millions of babies in the womb. That, that's an ancient god, the god of Molech in the Old Testament, where they sacrifice their children. We have a nation that's been sacrificing children for almost 50 years now legally. It's tragic. We're still worshiping the god of Molech in the United States. We worship the God of money. Oh, do we ever worship the God of money? We worship the God of entertainment. We worship the God of, of pleasure. Sex is not primarily seen as something to be between a husband and a wife for life, forever, just the two of them, as God has ordained, as God has prescribed. No, sex is something that, just for our own pleasure, you can have sex with anybody these days. Doesn't matter if they're male or female, uh, doesn't matter what age they are increasingly that's a problem I'm telling you what we're living in a time where people bow down to the God of pleasure these are false gods and God is superior over them and in time we will see that he is the one true God our job right now as believers is to repent of worshiping false gods be thankful that because of the blood applied to us we are forgiven and we can have a relationship with God. Walk with Him. Tell others the good news that Jesus saves and you can be forgiven of your sins. You can escape the death angel.